I'm here at Atlantic Motorsports Park in Shubenacadie, Nova Scotia today shooting the Atlantic Road Racing League Superbikes uh, and leading a field trip with a number of uh, Photo Guild in Nova Scotia photographers and trying to show how to better improve your general sports photography. Today we started off with a, a group a discussion on safety and safe practices around a racetrack. There's lots of dangerous uh, vehicles running around and lots of things happening all the time. So you need to be aware of your surroundings at all times and make sure that uh, you stay out of the path of the motorcycles. Unfortunately, you won't likely get great results with a pocket camera at the track. Gear is rather important, although even an entry level DSLR with a long lens is a great start. So one of the main things you're going to want to follow, one of the main techniques you're going to want to use when you're shooting any kind of fast moving sport is what's called panning. Now with panning, it involves a couple of things. First you have to press your shutter button halfway to pre-focus on the object and then you move to track your object through the frame of the shot. So it involves a couple of things where you keep the camera stable, keep your elbows tucked in, press the button part way to focus and then squeeze the trigger. Don't sh pull the trigger, squeeze the trigger and follow your subject through the frame. If you can do that, you'll get much clearer, much sharper, more interesting pictures when the background blurs, but yet the motorcycle or the object in the frame is nice and sharp and still looks like it's doing something. There's no hard and fast rule about exposure when shooting at the track, but I usually take a few readings with my camera's meter to start with. Most people expect that you need a fast shutter speed to freeze the motion, but in fact, I usually use a shutter speed that's typically at or below the focal length of my lens to help create a background blur while I pan the shot. In fact, if the shutter speed is too high, the bike looks like it's not moving in the shot and looks like it may even fall over. Showing a little wheel blur and a little panning and blurring of the background really helps to create the effect that these bikes are really moving as fast as they truly are. Okay, the last trick is to, if you're using a camera that has an image stabilized lens or a body that's image stabilized, when you're shooting moving motorsports like this, it's very important to actually turn off the image stabilization. If you leave it turned on, you'll find you get a blurry haze as your camera tries to compensate for the motion of the camera. If you turn the stabilization off, you get to take control of that motion yourself, and the camera doesn't try to compensate for your movement that's intentional. If you're using a monopod or a tripod, you can use vertical stabilization. Make sure you turn off horizontal stabilization. Since you're moving across a horizontal plane, you want to make sure that the camera doesn't try to compensate for that. If there's vertical motion or vibration, vertical compensation is okay. If your camera just has an on-off switch for image stabilization, turn it off. You'll find you get much better results in your images because of it. I usually try to keep my aperture to somewhere between uh, f5.6 to f8 to create enough depth of field so that the entire bike stays in focus while still creating that blur in the background if at all possible. Hi, I'm Jen Freed and I'm here to shoot racing bikes today with my camera. And I've never done it before, but I find it really challenging to try to pan with the camera and keep them in focus. I may have one or two fairly decent shots from today, but I won't really know until I get it on the computer screen. The last thing to talk about is some compositional issues and how you compose your images is actually very important depending on who you're actually targeting the shots for. If you're looking to take pictures and get them to the racers themselves, the racers want to see themselves front and center in the image. So the traditional rule of thirds goes out the window. You want to have the racer centered in the image, the bike nice and large, filling the whole frame if you possibly can. That way their sponsor logos are displayed loud front and center um, and the racer gets the most attention in the image. If you're shooting for competition or uh, for other uh, camera clubs and such, you want to make sure you try to follow the rule of thirds, place the bike so that it's moving into the frame and there's space on the, whether they're moving to the right, you want space on the right of the frame. If they're moving to the left, you want space on the left of the frame so they have room to move into. You don't want empty space behind the bike, you want empty space in front of the bike so it looks like they're moving into the picture. The uh, last time is if you're actually shooting for yourself and you want to have some of the most interesting and challenging images is actually to kind of break the rules. Once you understand the rules of thirds and things like that, then you want to have a nice tight shot, cut off the bike, have the bike moving onto the right side of the image if they're moving to the right or the left side if they're moving to the left so that you add more tension to the image. They don't have as much room to move into so it looks like they're moving faster. 
So for something different, challenging, and a whole lot of fun, I hope you take the opportunity to try shooting motorsports.